Started off as probably a pretty uneventful day. We had been out, we had returned to the uh, landing zone, and shortly after we got back into the LZ, the North Vietnamese started mortaring us. You could just hear that constant thumping, and then you could hear the rounds coming in. We knew that we were in for quite an eventful day that day. I got hit in the left arm, it broke the arm, severed the artery, all the nerves. But I just remember laying there thinking I was going to die. I had mentally uh, said goodbye to my mom and dad and, and my brother and sisters. I begged God for my life. I had made a number of promises to God that day, none of which I kept. Never really thought a great deal about that until something would happen. Occasionally I would hear that little voice that reminded me that I had promised. Admittedly, I, I pretty much ignored it for many, many years. Well, coming home was difficult for a number of reasons. Just acclimating to everyday life again. All of my friends, none of them actually had been in the military. So none of them knew what I had experienced. I think the psychological aspect was much, much more difficult to deal with than anything else. You know, you wonder about how you're going to deal with dating and are you going to be able to do all of these things. I was coming home from work one afternoon. I was driving into my apartment complex and uh, I see Lauren drive by me going the other way. So I turned around and we ended up having a conversation that day and we eventually started going out after that. We were married in July of 1977. It was just a great day. You know, you dream about marrying a, a high school sweetheart. It was very difficult navigating through the marriage and, and, and raising children. I suffered from depression for years. I would just feel this change coming over my body, particularly around the holidays, and I'd think, well, I wonder what so-and-so would be doing with his family had he lived. I self-medicated a great deal with alcohol. It's very difficult to convey to a wife or to your children what it's like to see one of your friends killed. There's no way that you can explain that, and there's no way that they could understand it unless they were there. But it was very difficult, and there were times when I'm sure Lauren felt like walking out the door. There were many times when I felt like giving up. I was in a place that I didn't want to be in. They had run some tests on me and they determined that I had cancer. But I'm driving home and it was, I'll never forget, it was just a beautiful, beautiful day. Blue sky, puffy white clouds. Just wondering and worrying about how I, were, how I was going to tell Lauren and, and the kids. And I hear this voice again, you promised, you promised. I go back to that where, you know, I heard that voice occasionally and, and I, it was perhaps the catalyst for me thinking about what kind of dad I'd been, what kind of husband I'd been, what kind of friend I'd been, and to think that I perhaps needed to get my life in order. I started attending Willow simply because our daughter, Brooke, she and her husband, Kevin, had started coming here uh, just shortly before that. Everybody was so warm and welcoming and, and I just felt at home here to this very day. It's my home. I often wonder what I would have turned out like had I not been wounded, had I not gone through the struggles that I went through trying to start out in life with a disability and then the cancer. And I think about all those struggles, and they're not struggles anymore, they're blessings. Every one of them is a blessing. I think the most amazing thing is that God never gave up on me. He never, ever gave up on me.